Hello, my loves. What a wild journey that we are on. I am just completely and totally um, taken back by the beauty that we live in and the fact that we even have an opportunity to live here at this time and to witness these things and learn about ourselves. So this is your October soul message and it's called the sound of silence. And initially I thought that it was going to be the hollow shell because that's the image that I saw. But as I was writing the blog and you know, the information was coming through as it does often feel like it's just being channeled. Um, you know, I heard, oh yeah, this is the sound of silence that we're moving into. So September, remember we had the dream catcher, we had the great mystery, and we still have some of that energy here. There's some of that circular, um, concentric circle images, the dream catcher I'll touch on in a minute when we get to the oil of the month, because that's equally beautiful. So what we are being called to right now, there's a silence, there's a crispness, there's a coolness in the air. And as I was writing, the image that I saw is like the coolness and the crispness is like the armor of the warrior. Um, it's the crispness of knowing, of truth, of absolutes, of definition. It's having to cut out what isn't you to find out what is you. It's like the, the Michelangelo quote about him um, carving the angels and saying that he didn't carve the angels. He cut away what was not the angels to reveal the angel that was already always there. And it's like, that's what we are doing on a deep, deep level here. And so last month, while we had this dream catcher energy, this kind of, um, I don't want to call it airy fairy because that seems um, dismissive, but we had this esoteric kind of head in the clouds um, you know, air energy. And we still have that air energy here because, um, like I talked about in the blog, the suit of the swords in the tarot is, you know, it represents the mental plane, the element of air. Um, the wielding, that sword is like the wielding of the warrior. And it's no accident that my husband just got me this little pocket knife necklace um, last month on my birthday. Because that's exactly where we are. That's exactly what we need to get through what we're doing. And, um, you know, I talked about in the blog, there's like this, um, this kind of nectar. There's a sweetness. There's a calmness that's coming in. But it isn't because we've crossed, crossed the finish line and everything is easy and we're, we're done with the heart. It's, it's quite the opposite. It's that we are going into a level of learning that is so intense that it calls for complete silence. It's like you cannot hear what you're not listening for. If you're busy, 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 then you never hear the song that is always being sung underneath your busyness. And so we have to get really quiet this month. So meditation is definitely on the table. But not just meditation, it's meditation in routine. It's the repetition, it's the daily commitment. It's the, you know, staff or the sword in the ground that says this is who I am and I claim it now. Um, it is deep intention. Um, so, you know, this thing came up in the last new moon ceremony that I thought was so gorgeous and it perfectly, you know, is a metaphor for where we are going. So what came through in the new moon ceremony was this top-down awareness that we have three eyes, two physical eyes, a third eye, three eyes, two ears, and one mouth. And that is the order in which we should use our senses. We should be looking the most 
listening next and speaking last, speaking the least. And so this month is really a call and you know where we are in history, it's just completely remarkable. We are being called to see everything, to, to see it all, to not shy away from seeing the hard, from seeing the truth of what is either outside of us or the truth of who we are inside. And that's why that deep silence, that meditation is needed because we cannot see what we're not looking at. We cannot see what we refuse to see. And also, you know, it's no accident that Mercury retrograde happened just at the beginning of, of this week. I'm recording this on the 29th of September. Mercury went into retrograde on the 27th, 20, 26th night, 27th early morning in Libra. So uh, Mercury is the planet of communication. It is the messenger in Libra. It is the scales, the balancing, the justice. Um, and uh, Libra is ruled by Venus, the planet of communication, relationships, you know, harmony, love, all these things. And so when Mercury goes in retrograde, it's kind of like a snow globe that's being shaken because if you look around and you see everything laid as it is laid, if it never moves, then you might not notice that there's mold growing in the corner. Or you might not remember some jewel that you have forgotten, that you've laid down and, and forgotten. So Mercury retrograde is like a snow globe being shaken up so that you can see everything differently. So how beautiful that we have this you know, imagery of the three eyes and the seeing and it's like what we don't see, we can't acknowledge. What we don't see, we can't listen to. We can't really hear it um, clearly. If we always have an idea of what it is, then we can't really listen to what it is. If you have an idea of who someone is, you can't actually be present for who they're showing you they are. Um, you can't actually listen and then you're speaking before you've seen and listened. And the other thing that came through um, I'm teaching an intuitive mentorship, have been um, all year since since April. And we are moving into the crown. And last month um, for September, we were working on the third eye. We've been moving from the root up through the chakras each month. And what came through last month that, um, you know, was around the third eye. And I started seeing this almost like a, um, like a teeter-totter with one end being the third eye, the middle of the teeter-totter being the throat and the other end being the heart and how they work in tandem. When you listen to what's on your heart, when you feel what's on your heart and then you speak it, once it's spoken, it's out on the table and now you can see it. And in reverse, when you see something more clearly, when you allow yourself space for meditation to observe, then you can say what you're seeing and then your heart understands it better. So there's this, you know, back and forth kind of energy that, that's happening. And so we have to allow ourselves that space. So there's an energy, you know, go back to the sword here for a second. There's an energy of discipline, of wielding, you know, the image of and why I almost called it the hollow shell is because that's the image that I was seeing. And that's the image for this month. Um, you know, you look at a hollow shell, it looks empty. But when you place the shell to your ear, you realize that there's a whole ocean that lives inside of that silence. And that air, that seemingly emptiness, seems like it wouldn't be any different than the air or the space that lives outside of the shell. But without the container of the shell, you would never have the container of the silence in there. So that's what we're listening for this month. We're listening for the sound that is within the silence. We're listening and we're looking to see, what have I missed? What is something about myself that I have not noticed? What is something about others that I have not noticed? Have I been moving along pretending that I know everything or acting as if I know everything already and defining it, but not staying open to what it actually excuse me, what it actually is. And there's this other image that came up in the, the, the polarization of magnets, you know, opposites attract, opposite magnets come together 
in the middle. They, they literally, you know, attract one another and clip together. If you've ever held magnets, you know, opposite magnets apart, how they just snap together. And the same magnets repel one another. So I feel like there's this call also to look around in your life and notice what diversity exists or does not exist. If you are surrounding yourself with people that are just like you, then you have no sandpaper, you have no mirror, you have no reflection, you have no grit to rub up against to learn something more about yourself. That's like all about, you know, whether it's intentional or not, it's all safe because there's no risk in that if everyone agrees with you and everyone's on the same side. And we couldn't be more polarized, um, certainly in the U.S. as a nation. And, um, you know, but doesn't that extend out? And, um, you know, all these thought ideas. And, and there that is that, that thought plane, the mental plane, the thinking, the sword, the air. Um, and we have to get really clear about who we are in order to know who we are not. And we have to get really clear about that in order to speak that language, that mercury communication, the messenger. And I forgot to look up the exact date of when the midpoint of mercury retrograde is over. But I think the end of the cycle I wanna say is like the 18th of October, and then there's two weeks of integration after that. So it's going to go all the way into November. But the midpoint is usually when you've gotten your message. It's usually when, you know, from here until the midpoint is when all the dust is getting stirred up, is getting, you know, moved around. The snow globe is getting shaken. Hey, we got to look at things a little bit differently here. And then by the midpoint, you usually have some understanding of what the lesson is. And then, you know, you can start working with that and start understanding it. And then you have the full two weeks after it's over to integrate. And so there is this way, you know, like I talked about the Michelangelo quote, what you're cutting out that isn't you allows the you that's left to be seen by others and by yourself. And so there's also an ego death here. Like you can't bring all of who you think you are to this thing. If you're going to meet someone in the middle, you know, like the male and female energy that is, and I'm not talking about gender, I'm talking about energy. Everyone has masculine, feminine energy within you. I don't care what your sexual orientation is or what your gender is. You all have this. You have to have it because it's the left and right side of your body. It's the kundalini energy that goes out and comes back and crosses at the chakras and it moves up and you have to have that polarizing energy in order to be brought back together, right? You go out and you come back apart, you're, you come back together. And so this opposing energy, where was I going with that? Um, that masculine and feminine energy, that opposition, you know, has to be there in order for you to come back together, right? Um, but I don't know where I was going with that. It'll come back to me if it need, if it needs to be. But, um, you know, that, oh, the, the loss of the ego death is where I was going with that. You know, when you're in relationship with someone, like, you're not going to win every time. Like, your, your version of what, what needs to happen is not going to win out every time. There has to be ego death. There has to be compromise, you know? It's like the best parts of you come forward, the best parts of the other person come forward. And that's what, you know, the magic is, is made there. But you have to be willing to let go of the stuff that, you know, it, it isn't, the, it's just the ego death. It's the stuff that isn't you, or it's this place of compromise. How do I want to say this? It's like, you know, there are definitely parts of all of us that we're carrying around that we think are truth, but when we really get down to it, and that's why it's so necessary to go into the silence because you have to find, okay, what isn't you and let go of that? Like, what is your line? What is the, um, what is your defining place? What is your stopping point? Like this is the truth of who you are and this is what you're living from and for. And if you don't know what that is, it's like going into battle without knowing what your goal is. 
Um, and so you have to get down to, and really what we're, you know, it's kind of a carryover from last month. It's the mining the gold. Um, so, you know, we're still doing a level of that, of like finding the truth within, within us. Um, okay, this is going to be a long one this month because I realize it's, this is going to go over the Instagram link that's allowed. Okay, let me talk about the three things that I want um, to guide us to focus on. We'll do the card and we'll do the oil because it's pretty fantastic this month. Um, okay, so the three things to focus on are defining your space. So what this means is routine. It's cutting out what is not necessary. It's building in a meditation routine, an exercise routine, um, you know, shopping for healthy food so that you have that to make um, and you're, you're having a healthy diet. If you leave it to the last minute and you don't organize it, you know, you're going to be going through the drive through because you are starving and you need something right now. Um, two, listening. Listening and observing, of course, that's going to be in meditation, but that's also going to be conscious listening of other people. What are they telling you? What are they showing you? And believe them when they're showing you. Don't try to place a narrative on top of it and say, well, they said this, but I think they really meant this. Like, no, you got to let people be who they are. And your only job is to listen and believe what they're showing you. And then you can react from the truth of that instead of the narrative that you're telling yourself. And then the third thing is to allow all of your feelings. So when you go into that deep silence and meditation, that kind of soul retrieval of self, you're going to find some nitty gritty things down there and it's going to be painful and you might not like what you're going to see. And there's going to be a lot of feelings that come up. So just allow them to go without judgment. Just allow them to move. Allow yourself to grieve, to cry, to whatever you need to do um, to let it all out. And um, let's do the card and then we'll do the oil. Um, also, I want to do announcements here of new and full moon dates. So the new moon ceremony this month is October 6th. They're always at noon Pacific time. They are recorded. You can come uh, live or replay um, on Zoom and you can have your camera on or off. We have an awesome group of women that are on subscription and they, they come every time. So if you're in that, you're going to also be you know called into the community there the full moon is on october 20th so both wednesdays both at noon and um, you can join live or replay so that's going on this oh it's this one baby and is it also this one okay well this is interesting two initiation cards um eros and also apocalypsis well let's see what that has to say let's go eros eros first I love it. Eros, because it's so synchronistic to, um, you know, we have uh, Mercury retrograde in Libra, and Libra is ruled by Venus. Um, Eros, love as desire, eroticism, sensuality. Though Eros can be depicted as unbridled sexuality and eroticism, a more contemplative understanding of this archetypal energy leads us to the root of desire itself. What do you long for? Why are we awakened by love? What makes us hesitate in the face of intimacy? This could not be more perfect. It's all of these questions. What is your line? What is your thing? Your absolute will not bend over this. This is the truth. Eros reconnects us with the primal longing to merge with another, the masculine feminine, um, with another human being, nature, music, art, plants, food, or anything that we perceive we are separate from. So there's the merging. Venus wants to merge. Um, Eros allows us to momentarily unite. Our heart embraces otherness, and in doing so, we further understand our own. Our life force awakens. This card reveals an inevitable initiation into love's labyrinth. You may find yourself swirling in a new territory of desire and sensuality. Explore the labyrinth with a curious and honest heart. And remember, though the way is circuitous, you are always being led towards its center. That word curious is really important. That is so valuable for this month. You have got to stay curious. Because if you aren't staying curious, then chances are you're judging and you're comparing. Um, when light, passion, playfulness, sexual health... When dark, madness, projection, obsession, to go deeper, love sonnet number 11 by Pablo Neruda and Basket of Figs by Ellen Bass. I've read that Basket of Figs so many times. It's a beautiful poem. Um, Plato reminds us that Eros can be experienced as platonic love. It is activated when we witness beauty and truth in the world, when our barriers soften, when we witness 
beauty in the world and when our barriers soften. And what I see that meaning in this context is uh, the barriers of what is not us or the barriers that we can't get over to see someone else as us. Um, the Hindu goddess Lalita, she who plays, can help activate Eros energy. She is also known as Kamishivari, Empress of Desire. So two initiation cards. There are only eight initiation cards in this deck. Okay, Apocalypsis is the second one. You can't make this shit up. Removing the veil of deception. Apocalypsis indicates a particularly painful time, one that unfolds when two disparate dynamics occur simultaneously, pulling the psyche in seemingly opposing directions. The first is a lifting of the veil. This means truths that have been kept in the dark are revealed, seen, and unearthed, just like the snow globe. No matter how relieving it is to witness them come into light, an element of despair and grief follows. The second dynamic is the regeneration that comes from the wreckage of the revealed truth. The old narrative breaks and a new story forms. Apocalypsis energy is similar to a forest fire's devastation for the sake of regeneration. The veil lifts and we see who and what has been hiding. From the nakedness of the truth, a child is born. Have faith in the process. Hold on to your center. This is the only way. When light, the unknown becomes known and guides the way. When dark, nihilism, fatalism, hopelessness. To go deeper, Michael Mead's Why the World Doesn't End, the movie This Is the End. All kinds of things will be revealed during a time of apocalypsis, from big global lies to little white ones that lace the bedroom sheets. Brace yourself for the horse of truth to storm your every field. This card has a strong relationship to Aletheia, which is the card of truth. If both cards appear in one reading, you've got some real uncovering to do. Take heed. So again, I mean, what the hell, folks? You cannot make this up. Okay, and let me move right into the oil of the month this month also. This almost ended up being the oil of the month last month. And then I heard, no, it's not quite time for that. And it came up against the again this month. So it's the oil of Awaken. Here's what's so phenomenal about this oil. This blend is made of only other blends. There's not a single oil alone in this, okay? It's made up of these blends. Joy, present time, harmony, forgiveness, and dream catcher, the oil that we had last month. So we have a carryover of the oil from last month, just like we have a carryover of some of that esoteric teaching energy that's coming in and the air quality, the air element that's present. And then we also have forgiveness, harmony, present time, and joy. We need all of that present time in the meditation, finding harmony, forgiving, letting go of what isn't us or, you know, those that have harmed us or whatever, bringing in that forgiveness and joy that guides our path like a, like a lantern. So, you know, you can't make this shit up. Um, a lot of patience being called for, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, like I'm saying, I, I actually had pulled the warrior card when I did a collage the other day that I posted here and are on Instagram. And I tossed it back in the deck just to make sure if that was the card that wanted to come forward, I wanted it to be present there. And it didn't, but that energy was present with me the whole time I'm writing the blog. I'm like, that's what we are in. We are in the archetype of the warrior because we are cutting out what isn't us to find what is us. We're cutting out untruth to find truth. And that truth may be different between people. Um, it's not about finding the truth. It's about finding your truth and living from that. And the more that you do that, um, you know, the more that you can know yourself and know others. I put it in the blog, but um, William Stafford's poem, A Ritual to Read to Each Other, ends with these lines. Um, now let's see if I can remember it because I didn't write it down. Um, though I think it's the words we choose, but I know this last part is correct. Yes or no or maybe must be clear. The darkness around us is deep. And that is the energy that we're in. 
right now. The darkness around us is deep and we've got to go all the way in and find out what is us and what is not us. And, you know, cut a circle around it. Use the sword to define your circle. This is you. And it's not you opposed to someone else. It's just the truth of who you are. That's what I love about the oil being five blends. It didn't come together, you know, just these individual oils. All five blends are just like, you know, a metaphor of the definition of all of us. They're all beautiful. They're all amazing blends on their own. But they got that way because of definition. And, you know, just those particular oils had to come together to create that blend. And now the blend for the month is all blends. So it's made up of the uniqueness, the individuation of all of us. And if we don't do that, then we're just clones of each other and we're not defining. Um, so, sorry, <laughs> this, this uh, soul message is really long this time. So... I will end there. Blessings. Be well. Be patient with yourself. It is tough territory, but it's also beautiful. It's also there's a salve. There's a calmness. There's a, you know, that comes in with the patience, with the learning and the knowing. It's gorgeous. So I love you. Be well. Reach out if you have any questions. Namaste.